Good afternoon, everybody. It's just Heather slash Hetty from Twitter at Alive in Me. And this one is obviously for at Epilepsy Cures. That's my site for all who have either friends or family or work with people who have epilepsy or have it themselves. And as I said before, I'm going on about my 32nd year of having it. And I'm going on my third brain surgery. And, you know, God has actually worked wonders, to be honest with you, through everything. And, you know, I've had pretty much a little bit of every type of seizure. So, you know, if you ever want to reach out and talk about what either your family members having or ask questions of what type could it possibly be, you know, feel free to come to me because, you know, I've had pretty much every single type. Um, my daughter as well, she has epilepsy too, and so not only do I have it, but I also get to take care of it. Fortunately, um, once I noticed um, her having it, you know, I noticed very well because once you're a patient, you're pretty darn observant of what they're like. And, of course, your heart's broken, but you know how to take care of it. And she's well-controlled, and which is a blessing because um, as a child, that's the one thing I never was um, on any medication. And I was on the strongest one out there. So um, when they say that absence seizures can be one that is grown out of for childhood epilepsy, I do pray and I do see her actually being one that could possibly be a case that can. Um, hormones do still give me some fear on that because um, they are true kickers out there. Um, however, uh, my epilepsy, I have like the strongest medication in the world and never, you know, more mind controlled. We do have slight difference. When I was a kid, my, my absence were a little bit um, different. However, um, granted that they just still weren't controlled. So, um, you know, I do have a little more bright side to look at with her. Um, the interesting part about epilepsy with um, especially what type you have for seizures and what side of the brain it's affecting, you know, it's just amazing what happens, you know, with your personality, you know, what it comes from. Does it come from the medication? Does it come from just, you know, you're, you're down because you're having seizures this week? Does it come from not being happy because you're having them? You know, so your mood's just down. So you're depressed because depression, anxiety. Do you have anxiety because you're uh, fearful you're going to have more seizures again? You know, because anxiety, depression, um, uh, all these different aspects of mood can be set in and you know you just concentrate too hard on it and the problem is is like well okay well so does that come from me having epilepsy can I can I sit here and say it's the epilepsy or is it me just sitting here concentrating too much on it because if you don't get out of there if you don't have you know hobby if you don't have an outside life if you do get introverted and that is the hard hard part when people are introverted and they are down which many many are and they hate themselves or they hate god or they hate whomever because you know this hate life because they have it it's not to be taken that way because you have still so much to give and, you know, I went through so much um, when I was 26, after I was 23, 24, 25, 26, those years beginning when, oh my gosh, I saw the mood disorder kick in. I had never seen it like that. And so it, it was just a rude awakening. So why didn't it before? And there's more to it than meets the eye. And, and fortunately, I got help. I did go see a psychologist that is made for people with epilepsy or brain disorder, such as stroke or so on, and found out that, oh my gosh, 
there's so much that they can help you find out about yourself. When you sit here and concentrate too much on the illness, that you can get over, you just become over analyzed on everything. Now, we sometimes with epilepsy have certain gifts. Um, mine is numbers. <laughs> so that became something I almost became kind of fearful of because if I saw a license plate here in Phoenix, Arizona, I would see it again about two months later and in a different part of the city, like 15 miles, and I would remember, and it would just creep me out. And those are the kind of aspects of it that kind of kind of bug us and think, oh, you know, we connect these things, and it's kind of eerie. Or, you know, I'd be the license plate person that would connect it with the city and that state and those numbers and... You know, there was just so much to it that just, you know, it kind of grates on you when you have that gift, yet at the same time, it can kind of um, really almost lead to psychiatric, you know, need for help. And trust me, they placed me on that. I was on every psychiatric help in 2003, you can name, and, you know, which was a start of a help. And then I found Jesus, and that's when, you know, true help was found, that I was able to open myself up and truly find, you know, um, that, you know, epilepsy doesn't control me. You know, I need to just give it all to him, and he has all the answers. And I shouldn't be sitting here, you know, reading license plates. I should be sitting here asking him and, you know, letting him read me instead. So even though that is a certain gift, you know, a, a long-term memory that I have and being able to have, you know, the ability to do 15,000 things at once, um, it still can be a, a kind of a, you know, just, just irritating gift at, at other times. Um, you know, the, and the other thing is the mood. The mood can totally be affected, and that comes from either pre-seizure, um, you know, the ictal fear of when you're about to go into it and then you are in it and then post-ictal after you have your seizure. And some people's moods are just absolutely, you'll either be just, you know, absolutely angry or just very, um, I'm one who gets very emotional, which is kind of a gift because on a normal basis I'm not one who cries much. So I think that's how God gets me to cry. And um, so I'm one who will absolutely pour tears. And um, but so so many are placed on antidepressants and stuff. And you know, if in need it's it's a great start. But you know the best best antidepressant, best anti-anxiety medication out there is truly the Bible. And I'll never forget the first time I opened it when I found Jesus in 2003. And I finally just opened it. I said, I'm going to find something, Jesus. You know, just lead me somewhere. And it was in Romans. Romans 4, of all places. It had to be Romans. And it was Romans 4. And I read 18 through 22. But I will start with 20, and it, it talked about Abraham never wavering in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. He was absolutely convinced that God was able to do anything he promised. And because of Abraham's faith, God declared him to be righteous. And, you know, just to have that faith just to continue on no matter what's going on in your life. When times are tough, you got to continue that faith in him. And he has this plan, and he has these gifts, and he is ready to open them up and, and lay them out for you. It's just to continue on and to have that faith. And that's why I loved to have, you know, open to that verse of all verses. And I just poured into tears, me of all people. And I didn't even have a seizure. So <laughs> anyway, I just want to say God bless you, each and every one. And anytime you're having a mood issue, come see me at Epilepsy Cures. God bless.